viruses are attacking the world's computers, and the computer warriors have been generated to stop them. A soccer trophy changes into an evil techno tank, forcing the computer warriors down. Hiding in a Pepsi can, the computer warriors fight back and deliver a direct hit. But the viruses keep coming, so the computer warriors convert a clock into a digital laser blaster and wipe, wipe out the virus era. Yeah! Computer warriors expect the unexpected. Each sold separately. Computer and pencil sharpener available for 1990, only from Mattel. Hey guys, and welcome back. As this week I take a look at a futuristic high-tech toy line, the Computer Warriors by Mattel. The Computer Warriors were a line of toys produced by Mattel from 1989 to 1990. The story behind the toys involves a top-secret government computer which accidentally unleashes evil virus troops. These viruses, led by Megahurt, can hide and conceal themselves in ordinary household objects and are bent on world domination by taking control of all the world's computers. The government computer activates a failsafe program after realizing the evil viruses were set loose and produces antiviruses in the form of the Computer Warriors, led by their leader Rom to battle Megahurt and his virus minions. The toy line did not have its own animated cartoon tie-in like many series did, Instead, having only one pilot episode, Computer Warriors The Adventure Begins, which aired in September of 1990 and was later released on VHS. You four Computer Warriors have been developed by Parallax to seek out and neutralize a group of malfunctioning AI programs who have been transformed into dangerous computer viruses. These viruses have made an unauthorized entry into the bitstream. If left unchecked, these viruses could cause irreparable damage to the entire world computer network. The self-proclaimed leader of these viruses is Megahertz, a dangerous program who will stop at nothing short of complete domination of the Bitstream Matrix. The toys themselves were designed as unassuming everyday objects that you find around your home that could transform into vehicles or play sets at a moment's notice for battle. The tagline for the toys corresponded with Expect the unexpected, and with everything ranging from a Pepsi can to a calculator, it fit the toys perfectly. In the UK, the toys were exactly the same except branded as Computer Force. There were two opposing factions for control of the Bitstream, which was the main network of data that was linked to all computers around the world. First, you have the heroic computer warriors led by ROM, the hyper-intelligent clone of a top-secret anti-terrorist training manual. Rom has been programmed to function as a dedicated take-charge commander. Relentless in his pursuit of evil virus renegades, he's a straight-shooting mission commander. He is also programmed with renegade imagination, which allows him to keep going when all other programs have failed. His PC board transforms into an assault bomber. Then you have Debug, the second-in-command of the Computer Warriors. This super sleuth is capable of decoding and neutralizing even the most deadly virus, Async. The clone of a top-secret military code manual, Debug specializes in detecting virus booby traps. He has a PC board that transforms into a high-speed rocket plane. Next we have Decoder, a cold-calculating mathematical genius who has a hard time balancing his own checkbook. Decoder is a curious mix of willing warrior and absent-minded professor. Concealed inside an ordinary-looking calculator, he computes specialized sequential coding sequences to lure the enemy deep inside databases. When Decoder traps an unsuspecting virus, he converts his calculator into an awesome techno tank and blasts away. We also have Scanner, a second generation artificial intelligence program designed to track down computer viruses and scrambled source codes. He uses an everyday flashlight as a disguise that transforms into a flashcraft. Then we have Micron. Micron is a super-intelligent data bank of useful information for the computer warriors. In fact, he's so filled with up-to-the-minute information that his hideout is a digital clock that transforms into a rolling assault vehicle. And finally, we have Grid, the computer warrior's mechanic specialist and electrical engineer. He can repair and pilot any mechanism. Grid is a gung-ho computer commando whose concealer is a Pepsi can. When duty calls, his Pepsi can reveals a hyper hover jet. Now we have the evil viruses, led by Megahurt, a crazed power-hungry virus program that will stop at nothing to take over all the world's computers and the world itself via the way of the bitstream. He has a PC board that transforms into a sleek and deadly flight interceptor. 
Next, we have Async. Sweaty, smelly, and totally gross, this evil clone of a medical diagnostic manual has been programmed to paralyze defense circuitry and to infect entire systems. He's an expert in booby-trapping power ports and poisoning memory transfer chips to snare unwary computer warriors. Second in command to Megahertz, Async is so devious and scheming he's feared and mistrusted by his own evil comrades. Then we have Null. His overwhelming negative athletic ability causes total power shutdowns in most systems. A battle-tested bully ready to dropkick a circuit at the drop of a disk drive, he hides himself in an ordinary soccer trophy which transforms into a radar rover. Next we have Minus. Fused from a hijacked flight simulator program, Minus is a dastardly pilot of the viruses. To him, wreaking destruction, mischief, and misery is a way of life. He possesses the ability to self-replicate, making him virtually indestructible. He conceals himself inside of an ordinary pencil sharpener that turns into a techno jet. And finally, we have Index. Index is the real brains behind the evil schemes of the viruses. His virtual memory was expanded beyond capacity, leaving his actual body weaker than the other viruses. He conceals himself inside a book that transforms into a rocket base at a moment's notice. And of course, we have the computer the strategic base of operations for the computer warriors that has a working crane and twin synchronized circuit blasters. It also comes with two figures, Chip, the heroic team's expert programmer, and Cursor, an evil saboteur virus captured and held prisoner. Sadly, by the end of 1990, interest had diminished and the computer warriors had all but faded. Mattel discontinued the line as a result of poor sales, relegating the computer warriors to nothing more than a faded memory sent to the recycle bin. Alright guys, well I'm going to be taking a look now at some of the computer warriors, figures, vehicles, and play sets that I have in my collection. I have three here with me today. Um, I have two carded examples of the Heroic Computer Warriors and one uh, vehicle slash playset combo toy, and that would be the uh, Pepsi can. Um, I unfortunately don't have any of the evil viruses, but that's cool. The Heroic Computer Warriors are just as good. Um, I want to say a little up front that uh, these are a very unusual niche toy from the, uh, the 80s and the 90s, and that's what I think really makes them cool. I really remember these growing up, and um, they kind of catered to, I was in middle school, you know, like, hey, these are like things you would see on your desk at home or school supplies. And I think that's what kind of was a draw for me because it was like, hey, wow, this is cool. Like I can have them on my desk or you can have them at school and make your homework or your schoolwork more fun with things like transforming pencil sharpeners, calculators, you know, a, a computer that transformed. Really cool. So it was taking a spin off of like Rock Lords, Transformers, GoBots, but in a very, very unique way to where they weren't so much robots, but you were transforming just everyday um, objects. So instead of transforming something into a robot, you were just transforming a normal everyday um, object. So kind of like Blaster or Soundwave, when you think from the Transformers, how they were just regular objects but transformed into robots, it's kind of taking a spin on that. So anyway, let's take a look at the uh, the figures that I have here. We'll start off with the uh, the carded figures, and of course, we'll start off with the leader of the heroic computer warriors, and that's Rom. And as you can see here, it says "Expect the unexpected" on the top, which of course was the computer warriors' uh, catchphrase. And PC board becomes aerial assault bomber, which I always thought was a little weird because. Being PC boards, um, that definitely makes them really niche. I always wondered why didn't they just make them into like, you know, um, three and a quarter inch floppy disks? Because they show them, you know, in the commercials and stuff, flying out of the floppy disk drive, and it's like, well, PC boards don't come out of there. They should have just made them all different floppy disks. But whatever. I always thought that was just a little weird um, with this toy line, but still, still really neat. Still really cool. And uh, let's get a nice up close look at that here now. And you can see Rom on the front. He has his uh, blue uh, jumpsuit. I do have a loose Rom. I just don't know where I put him at the moment. So unfortunately, I can't really take him out to show you what he looks like. Uh, they come with one gun that you can attach onto the uh, the PC board once it's converted into an assault fighter, and also a um, 
like a harness so that way you can put the figure in there and they can sit and they won't uh, fly out. And one of the most interesting things about these toys is just check out all of the different like uh, microchips, you know, and transistors and diodes and everything. Very colorful. There's a lot going on there for a bizarre, weird toy to where you look at it. It's like, it's like, what is that supposed to be? It's like, how is that a plane or anything? I guess it kind of reminds you of like Tron, and I think maybe this was almost kind of a weird fusion cash-in between like Transformers and Tron, that's what this line feels like, um, which is very interesting and unique and uh, very different. So let's take a look at the back of the card here, and you can see you have some fantastic artwork with all of the different playsets. You got the soccer ball, you have the computer playset, you have the flashlight beamer um, flying in, you have a uh, Megatech uh, back there chasing them. You have the Pepsi can opening up. You have the uh, clock radio opening up. Very, very cool. So much fun stuff going on. And then on the back here, of course, too, we have a little uh, bio about Rom. And it talks about, you know, his, uh, his uh, like, unique abilities and stuff like that. And then at the bottom here, it also shows how to transform the PC board and remove the figure attach the accessories, and then transform it into the fighter pilot. So really cool. A lot going on on that one little card. Very fun. Very colorful. All right, and now let's take a look at the other card example I have here, and that is Debug. And Debug is the heroic super sleuth. So he'd be the one who would be kind of like seeking out the viruses and figuring out what their plans are. And uh, now his PC board becomes a rocket plane, so it kind of looks like an F-15 fighter pilot jet, I suppose. And uh, we'll get a nice close-up look here at uh, Debug, and he has this kind of reddish uh, jumpsuit with the green, um, like, whatever that is, computer accessory, some type of scanner grid on the front of his, uh, his vest there. And then we'll get a nicer look at the fighter pilot. Which really does kind of look like a futuristic, you know, like F-15 fighter jet or something like that. So that's really cool. Like, that definitely looks a lot better than, uh, than ROMs. Like, you compare this and it's like, wow, that looks cool. And that's like, yeah, what is going on there? But still fun. And then on the back, of course, we have the same as the other figure. We have the uh, various colorful uh, artwork on the back. And then, of course, we have a little bio card there talking about Debug a little bit, and then it shows you how you uh, would go and transform his PC board into the fighter plane. So very nice, very nice. Alrighty. And now let's put him back there, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, Pepsi can. Alright, so now let's check out the Pepsi can. And this, I think, is really cool, and what really attracted me to this uh, toy line growing up is if you were to look at this from a distance and you didn't see that little line at the bottom you would almost think this is just like an old vintage empty can of Pepsi like just sitting on a shelf somewhere and I think that's what made this line really original really fun and really neat and plus how many toys did you actually see that had like branded brand names on them I mean, they must have paid Pepsi quite a bit to have their logo on uh, one of their toys and be able to uh, be able to sell it but I just think that's really cool very creative you have the uh, the tab on the top you know like to where you'd open up of course your can of Pepsi there you have the uh, Mattel 1989 logo on the bottom made in Thailand and what's really cool about this too is you kind of open it almost like you would open up a can of Pepsi and what I mean by that is you actually push down a little bit right on the tab there you can pretend you're opening up your can of Pepsi. And that opens up to, we have Grid inside here. Let's see if we can get a better look at him inside of his little base. And it turns into like a little base, a docking station for his uh, fighter jet, which is really neat. And you can see there's stickers in there with all the different circuitry and all the uh, electronics inside, of course, which looks really cool. He has two additional bombs for his uh, fighter pilot. So now let's take this out. And first, let's take a look at Grid. 
He has a uh, little lever that keeps him attached in to the cockpit of his fighter pilot. So we can just move that up there. Put that out of the way for a second. And then we have Grid here. And he has a uh, kind of a mustardy yellow and purple color scheme with a purple face and the yellow circuits. Uh, not a whole bunch of articulation, only in the uh, arms and the legs there. I unfortunately don't have his weapon that you would have attached into his hand. That is missing. And then on the back, very, very different, very colorful. You see all the different diodes and transistors, the pink, big black transistor on his back there, and just all the different electronics. And man, there is a lot going on there. So very, very cool. And a lot of times when you see these out in the wild, people have no idea what they're looking at because they're just so foreign and so different. So now let's put him back in his cockpit here and let's actually check out his uh, little fighter jet. And we'll strap him in for safety. And you just fold down the wings and move the guns forward. You can also leave them where they are. That's fine too, whatever your preference is. And let's get him secured in there. And yeah. That's a really nice looking little uh, little fighter plane. You got some stickers on the side here that are kind of peeling with some age, but give us a little bit of color, a little red and white. You got some little computer electronic stickers on the back, the blue body of the uh, fighter plane with the uh, silver wings and gray guns. And another neat little feature with this too, well two little features is that with this little harness you can actually play with them and you can, you know, have little adventures and stuff, and you can flip them upside down. And, whoops! Now, normally, he wouldn't fall out. I probably held him a little too long there, but you can flip them upside down. And then he'll actually stay in his seat, which is really fun. And then on the bottom here, he has the bombs that are loaded into the bottom of his uh, fighter jet here. And there's a lever in the back. So you're just flying around, choom, 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 choom. and then he drops his little bomb and you have two additional ones in there to where you can reload and be ready to go again, which is really neat. I think that's a lot of cool little features for a very small toy and very unique, very unique. I gotta say, these things are really unique. So we'll dock him back up and then we'll close up the Pepsi can Make sure to save the flavor, it doesn't go flat. And alright guys, well that is going to do it for uh, my little collection of computer warriors here. I hope you had a good time today checking out this cool and very obscure, um, very niche, very different uh, toy line. It kind of found its own way in the toy world where it's not quite a transformer, um, you know, it's not quite a GoBot or something like that. It really is its own weird thing. And they're, and they're kind of like Dino Riders too because the little figures are about the same size. So it's just this weird fusion of all these different toys uh, coming together. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed taking a look at this cool uh, Computer Warriors toy line today by Mattel. I think they're really fun. I think they're really neat. They're very rare to find out in the wild or even at toy uh, shows. They can be very expensive. Um, so if you do find them, you know, try to find a good price, see if you find them out of the flea market or something like that. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this awesome little toy line with me today, and I will see you back here next time. Take care. Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and you can follow me at Facebook at King of Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time.